Hey you guys, welcome to our spring fling earring design. Let's get those wood burners hey out. Guys, so happy Friday. Here we are today with another project. This is gonna be called our spring fling earring. Super excited to have a couple of ideas for spring earrings. So you're gonna need your wood burning tool if you don't have one. I got this from, don't worry, it's not plugged in. I got this from Michaels. I need to switch out this tip because I realized the project we wanna do today, I need a different tip. I got this from Michaels. I used my 50% off coupon. I think it's about um, Oak Hollow or something like that. I mean, they only had one when I was there. So y'all went to Michaels yesterday. They're like, they're going out of business. My baby said maybe they're um, like downsizing or um, selling out of all their old stickers and stuff like that. Maybe they're doing something new. But I was like, Michaels, um, what is really going on though? But anyway, so this is my wood burning tool. Oh, it's by Walnut Hollow. I knew it was something like that. This thing gets really hot. So I'm gonna show you how I use it. I've done a um, video in the past. It doesn't exactly work like a pen or a pencil because all of the heat comes from this whole thing right in here. It gets super hot. So I was holding, you wouldn't hold it by here. You'd hold it way back here and it's gonna burn whatever it comes in contact with. I think it gets up to 900 degrees. It's pretty hot. You don't wanna have it around kids. It also comes with a little thing that you can sit it on but that thing moves around, so you're gonna wanna have it on a pretty um, solid surface, right? To where it's not gonna be rolling around and moving around because if it falls in your lap or fall or touches you, it's gonna set your soul on fire. So it's very hot, okay? So we're gonna be using that. And I picked out some paints that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna be using my favorite, as you already know, light buttermilk, because we're gonna be doing something that kinda looks like a picket fence, right? So we're gonna do, that's my idea, right? But it's gonna be a picket fence that looks kind of distressed and weathered. And then we're gonna put, one is gonna have a flower design and one is gonna have a bumblebee design. I don't know how to do a bumblebee, but in my mind I figure out he just is gonna be real chunky and black, right? <laughs> so that's what I want it to look like. And I'm thinking about putting some glitter on the bumblebee wings. So these are just some things I've set aside that I may need. This is antique white. And this one is light buttermilk. So I'm probably nine times out of 10 gonna use this one cause this is what I want as the background color for the picket fence. But I just set some paints out that I'm thinking I might wanna use so they'll be handy um, when I get ready to use them. My favorite paint is Americana Deco Art, not this one, but the satin brand, satin finish. It has like a little black label going across here. Um, but these two colors, one is light orchid and the other one is light pink. So really pretty, gonna sit those off to the side. And then this is the bumblebee color, it's called Primary Yellow by Americana Deco Art as well. And then you already know this is the, oh, I'm trying to fix that, the little nozzle got bent. This is the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. I think I got this from Michaels, um, but we talked about that in the past. So I use that as the gloss or the sealant or the top coat, however you wanna call it. You can use spray adhesive top coats, which I don't prefer because I don't like all that aerosol going all over the place and you have to do it outside. You're gonna need some wooden pieces, but you can use whatever you want. I am thinking about switching to a different glue. I watched a video yesterday on the glues that are available. I'm thinking about going to a gel-based glue. So I'm gonna look over the weekend if we go out of town and see if I can find that at a craft store in another area since our craft store looks semi-picked over. So these are the wood pieces that we're gonna be using. Again, I get these from Michaels. They come in a whole pack. Um, it doesn't tell me how many were in this particular pack, but it was a lot of them. And I like how they're shaped like skateboards, sort of in my mind. So you're gonna need a pack of those, any wood shapes you want, because also um, you can get round, you can get square. And what I do is I take the square ones and I put them on the diagonal because I prefer the earrings to hang that way than to be this way. So, you know, your design, your choice, you're in charge, you're the boss. So those are gonna be for another project, so I'm gonna sit them off to the side. So right now, all you need to have on your table is your wood burner tool, the paints you're gonna use, some water, wet wipes if you wanna wipe your brushes off, I have a paper towel off to the side, and you're gonna need some jewelry components, of course. Again, I get mine from Michaels or either Hobby Lobby. I buy these in bulk, so. You're just gonna need your ear wires, fish hooks, jump rings, um, whatever type of hanging you're gonna use for your earring, you're gonna need that. And I just wanted to show you all these. I went to Hobby Lobby the other day, and y'all, they got rid of the coupon. 
This is probably my last time going in Hobby Lobby for a while, for a long time. They claim they lowered their prices, and so therefore, since they lowered their prices, they no longer have the coupon. I'm like, oh, wrong move, Hobby Lobby. <laughs> but, you know, if y'all want to keep going, go right ahead. But I'm like, Hobby Lobby, I don't like y'all that much that I would come in there without a coupon. And they don't take competitors' coupons anymore, I don't believe. So let me get rid of this. That one has a little spot on it. Um, I think it comes that way. You know, sometimes you have to look at these little wood pieces because they'll have little imperfections. So let's use that one. But yeah, the lady told me they weren't gonna give the have the coupon. I kept sifting through the app and um the through the um yeah through the app and it wasn't on there. But I did get these. They were on sale at 50% off and they're necklace bells. I got five packs of them because they were 50% off. So that meant instead of being $3.99, roughly they were two dollars, right? So $1.98, something like that. So I got the smaller bales, which we can use to hang centerpieces on necklace from. And I got a larger one because there's some seashells that I have that I want to create necklaces out of. So I ended up getting three of the small ones and I ended up getting two of the large, they only had two left of these. They ended up having two of those, so I got those. And they come six per pack. So. You can make six necklaces per pack. That's really cool. So how many come in here? Six as well. So if I got five packs, that's 30 necklaces. So that's pretty great. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. The wood burning tool I got came with a chisel tip. This is the one I'm gonna use today. It also came with a pointed tip. It almost looks like a little bullet or a pin top. And then it had one that looked like a spatula. So I would assume it makes like diamond tips. I hadn't tried that one before. Maybe we'll try that one um, on a different project. And then this is the little thing that it comes with that it's supposed to sit on that way. So it may work properly today as long as the cord's not flailing all around the place. So all you do is screw them into the top, right? So you just screw the piece in that you wanna use. And while you're using it, it does get loose a little bit. So you can use a pair of pliers to tighten it back up if it gets loose, you know, while you're using it on your project, but don't forget that it's hot and accidentally put your finger on there. So I'm gonna sit those little tips off to the side. I'm gonna put them in the Ziploc bag because I literally had to go dig them out of the box. <laughs> so I'm gonna shake up the paints. I'm gonna plug up the tool. The tool takes about, it'll start heating up really quickly, but to get to the heat that you want, or I'm thinking I want it to, I'm gonna let it sit there for about five to 10 minutes, and then we'll get started on the project. So what we're gonna do first is while that's heating up, we're gonna paint the bases, because I want to actually um, have the paint done first and then burn the etchings into it, and then we're gonna paint on the design. Starting out, I'm just gonna use the light, but, <laughs> excuse me, the light buttermilk and the light pink because I just want to give it like a whitewashed um, look or feel. So I'm trying to think of what brush I'm going to use right quick. So I'm just going to use one of the little, just a little fluffy brush um, for no rhyme or reason, just because I just want to brush it on there. So it doesn't need to be, I didn't want to use a stiff brush or anything like that. And so um, using those two colors, we're just going to give it a quick wash. I'm going to do the, the lighter color first. And the reason why I want it to look like a wash is because I want it to have a bit of a distressed look or feel to it. So I'm putting on a really light coat. I'm not putting on a heavy coat or anything that's gonna take, you know, a really long time to dry. Because again, you know, it's just a wash. So just going that way, I'm going in the same direction making sure to do the sides, because prayerfully, I don't want to have to go back and um, retype the side, I mean, re <laughs> retype, repaint the sides. Now, we'll have to paint the back, but we'll do that after we get everything dried. And I'm going to paint the back before, sorry for being out of, film, out of screen. I'm going to paint the back before we put the design on the front. So, one, I'm envisioning putting a flower, like a flower, you know, going growing along a trellis or a fence, and the other one's just gonna be a bumblebee. So, just doing a whitewash, like just a little. It's not really a wash because I guess with a wash you'd actually be adding water or what have you. Um, but in my mind, I'm just calling it a whitewash because it's just gonna be a wash of paint going on here. Like we're not gonna do two and three coats. And what I want to do is let the paint dry before we. Um, 
use the wood burning tool because I don't want to get paint on the tip. It might get paint on the tip anyway, and it probably will be easy to wipe off or wash off, but I just want to make sure <clears throat> It's at least decently dry before we go ahead and burn into the tool. So just the tip that that's what I'm going to do. But of course, this is your design. So whatever you choose to do, if that's different, no worries at all. So what are you guys doing for the weekend? I'm literally going to take off tomorrow. Surprise, shocker, I know. So that's how it looks. It's just a wash. And now we're going to go ahead and do the pink. So I decided that I'm going to be taking off at least one day during the weekend. Um, oops. And Sunday is, you know, I'm gonna work probably for a couple of hours on Sunday, but I had to decide, do I want Sunday off? Do I want Saturday off? So normally it's gonna be Sunday, but tomorrow it just happens to be that I really wanna be off tomorrow. So I'm not gonna be selling any houses. Well, prayerfully I'll still sell a house. I just won't be out showing a house. So let's do the light pink, which I think is so pretty. I think it's perfect for spring. No clue if it's the Pantone colors or not, but guess what, I don't follow all that. I just share you know, what colors are for the year based on what, you know, I see online, but I've marched to the beat of my own drum. So if I wanna use blue and blue isn't the Pantone color of the year or a specific shade of blue, doesn't mean I'm not gonna use it, right? Cause you do what you want. Art is subjective, it's what you like. So let's get a pretty coat of pink on there. I really like this pink. I think it's so girly. This is um, my 14 year old's favorite color. She's probably like me, she loves the rainbow. So, but I know that light pink is like, she calls it her aesthetic, right? So look how pretty that is. That's like a really pretty baby pink. I'm just gonna wipe that off the bat. Sorry for sniffling. Ooh, I started taking Zyrtec early, I already told y'all that. So another wash of the pink, and then we're gonna let this dry. And y'all, I am so hungry. So I think while this is drying, I'm gonna eat a bagel or something. I started, um, oh yeah, I started jumping rope because I want to lose weight. And um, I wanted to go walking, but sometimes when I get off work, it's too late to go walking. And we have this really pretty trail near our house. It's like a nature trail that's about eight miles long. But there ain't no way I'm going out there by myself. I'm like, honey, common sense says we don't walk out in the woods by ourselves. Now it's a paved trail but it's surrounded by woods and forests and there's a river that runs back there. And so a lot of times there are people on it, but I am not trying to end up on the um, nine o'clock news or whatever the news time is, <laughs> right? So I'm, like, I'm not going back there by myself. So really pretty. I love how that looks, it's just simple. And so we're gonna let those dry. They have their wash of color and just lift them up so they don't get stuck. And while they're drying, I've already plugged the tool in. It's not heating up yet, I forgot. It has an on off switch, so be sure to hit your on switch. So now it's on, it's heating up. And so we're gonna go let these dry and then we'll be back. I'm gonna put the lines in there and then we'll paint on the design. And prayerfully, it's gonna come out gorgeous. Okay, you guys, so this coat should be dry already. For, um, yeah, for the tops, they're super dry. So I'm gonna set this off to the side. I'm just sitting the paint inside of a Ziploc bag because y'all, it'll stay. I'm sorry, I had to hang up on a spam call. It'll stay moist in there for a week or so. So we're gonna sit that over there. So now I'm gonna just put my hand near the heat to see if I feel it. And yes, yeah, on. So in my mind, I just wanted to try to do like a crisscross pattern. So. Like I said, the cord kind of, sorry about, the cord kind of has a mind of its own. So be sure to hold down here. It won't necessarily work like a pin, but you're gonna hold it like a pin. So I wanna do like, kind of like a pattern like that. And then we're gonna come back like a trellis. Does that make sense? So. I'm just following along a straight line. And if you touch it too close to the design, it'll actually dig into the wood. Because the closer you hold it, so now I'm gonna just smudge it out a little bit. 
I like how that came out. Look, that's pretty. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of phone calls this morning. So, really pretty. I like how that turned out. So, now let's do our best to match it up over here. And we can always go back over it, you know, however you want. It's art. Again, it's forgiving. It's subjective. But once you put your line down with this thing, that's it. Okay, so we're going to do one, two, I'm just being quiet because so I'm paying attention on burn myself. <laughs> so, now the lines, once you put them down in the paint, you can't, um, they're not still hot when you are touching the wood item itself. Okay. That one went off a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and put another one down there. And only because I noticed right there, it was different a little bit, so I went on and put one there to match them up. So, I think I want to do like a few more lines just, just because I just want to. So, look how pretty that looks. Now, you could paint inside of all these squares if you wanted to, however you wanted to do it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one more line through here. Because I don't want that one line right there to just stand out on its own. So, I'm going to go back through. Okay, so now I'm gonna leave it alone. So it's like a weathered fence of how we look. Now this one I'm probably gonna do a few thicker lines. Again, I don't really have a rhyme or a reason. I just wanna do a chiseled tip. I want it to be a bit of a thicker line. So I'm putting more, I'm pressing down harder on this one than I did the last one. Now once the line is there, it's a done deal. You can't go back and change anything, okay? So you gotta do your best to match things up when you're initially putting it down. And again, they're not gonna match up perfectly because thinking about it, your um, hand isn't gonna be perfectly doing the same thing. So I'm just going back over where I noticed a little dark. I want it to be a little darker. I want it to look a little bit more burnt. I kind of like that charred look and the heat is in the very tip so if you just hold the tip down it's gonna put out more heat okay so again it's gonna be hard to follow the same line because the point itself is gonna follow the grooves of the wood not just not just necessarily the line that you put down but it's gonna follow any grayness in the wood that's what I was trying to say so I'm just holding this here so I can get a darker etching. And like I said, it'll start to dig into the wood if you hold it there in one spot too long. Okay. Let's make this one a little darker too. So. So I'm gonna go back over it again. And I'm gonna do my best this time to just let the wood get a little bit more burnt, let it get a little more charred. And I can tell because it's pulling, I can tell I'm going against the grain. Watch out for your fingers because I'm almost having to like force it to go backwards. That's really pretty, I like that. Okay, so let's sit that one off to the side. Well, let me sit it beside us so I can follow it. Now again, it's gonna be hard to do it match for match perfect, but you just have to do your best. I love the smell coming off of it too. <laughs> um, it reminds me of new construction. That's funny. It's a real estate thing, I guess. But like if you're someone that loves going to open houses and loves going to new houses, like you would love this. It's 
it just smells like new construction. I love that smell. So now, let's see, got one more. really pretty you could even leave them like this let me hold let me sit this hot thing down I'm gonna go ahead and ooh, gonna go ahead and cut it off so that way it can be cooling off over there um, let me just touch up my door right quick So if you wanted to, I mean, look, that could be like a really um, pretty graphic pattern. You could leave it just like that. You're beautiful. And you could leave them just like that. You could put top coat on them and paint them and call it a day if that's what you wanna do. But I wanna paint a design on there because that's the plan we designed. But I also, now that we've done that, have an idea to do it and to put these in different colors. You gotta dust them off. <clears throat> they have, um, like the broom residue, so let's brush that off. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry, my dog is growling. I don't know what he's growling about. And he ain't gonna catch anybody. He's all the 13 pounds, like, who are you growling at? Like, there is nobody out there you gonna be able to catch. <sighs> Which I guess he could, he caught a little squirrel one time. Thank God he didn't kill it. He just kinda flung it around like a little rag doll or we were so upset. <laughs> so anyway, so now these are ready for paint and Trying to decide which one I'm gonna paint first. I think I'm gonna go with the bumblebee. So let me pull up what a little bumblebee is supposed to look like and how we're gonna paint him and I'll be right back. In my mind, I've come up with the idea that if it doesn't turn out like we want it, I'll have to just paint over it and do another painting. <laughs> because we gotta have a backup plan, right? So I've gone on and used the um, primary yellow and then this is just called black, right? So. I got the colors out. I did go take a look at what a bumblebee should look like. I'm not gonna try to be really artsy about him. I'm just gonna start putting down the colors and I'm gonna use the tip of the paintbrush. So all I did was dip the tip of the paintbrush in there and then we're just gonna put the color down here on the base, right? So I'm not gonna really have a rhyme or reason about trying to get a perfect, um, like a perfect shape or a perfectly round shape, what I'm gonna do is just try to make a, um, a little bubble of what I feel like the bumblebee's body would look like. You know, so we know that he has a round little body. And I realized I put him kind of close to the edge. So with that being said, I don't know how far his wings are gonna be able to go. <laughs> so maybe we'll do it to look like his wings are off the edge. I don't know if that makes sense or not. So let's find, and I'm using the um, the end of a brush or the end of some brushes that I have. So we're gonna let that dry just a little bit. Now his wings are almost like translucent or like a brown. So let's just add a little bit more yellow to his body. And then after it dries some, we're gonna add the little stripe that's down the middle of his back. I really want him to be perfect, but um, okay, we're gonna do our best, right? So for now, there's a little ear bubble in there, so let's take that out. So let's also, since we know he has antenna, right? and he has legs, so I'm just gonna use a really small brush. I'm just gonna do two lines. They look like antenna. Right, so that's all it's gonna look like. And then 
according to what I saw, he also had legs. <laughs> so we're just gonna do like some legs at the bottom, but we're just gonna do it really lightly, okay? Because again, I'm hoping this comes out looking like a bee, but if not, we're gonna make it look like something. We'll make it look like a flower. So for now, that's what he's looking like. We're gonna have to let him dry a little bit. So while he's over here drying, on this particular design, I want it to do like a daisy or some type of flower. So we're gonna use the white paint that we have. And so I'm just dipping the edge of the brush into the light buttermilk paint. And I want the flower to be kind of off the side. So I'm just doing a circular motion and just putting a dot of paint there. And then what we're gonna do is we want the flower to have like yellow petals, okay? So I do have to decide on what brush I'm gonna use and I'm trying to decide which one isn't too long. I'm gonna use that same yellow. So all I did was dip it in the, um, in the paint. And we're just gonna do stripes as if, remember when you were little and we were in kindergarten or preschool, if you can remember back that far. And we would make sunshines, right? And we would just make lines and make it look like the sun was just shining in the sky because we really couldn't draw that well. Maybe you could, maybe you were an artist when you were little, but I wasn't. I could do stick figures. I still can't draw people. My 14 year old can do people really well. So, we're just gonna make a really pretty free, form, free formed flower. So that's what we're working on. And I'm not sure um, what colors we're gonna use, but I know I want this yellow and I wanna continue using the yellow to make it stand out. And we're gonna give it some dimension on the um, inside of the white stamen part or the white, I don't know what's the stamen. I know these are petals. So I think that's the stamen, but whatever that is in the little center, we're gonna give that some dimension as well. And if you want it, you can add greenery, you can add leaves. I'm not sure if we're gonna do that or not. Still planning it in my mind. And we're gonna just do our best to add some dimension to it after we get all the petals on. So, so far, that's what it's looking like. And I know you might be like, so far, boo, hiss of the hiss, right? But let's keep going, because we don't know what it's gonna look like yet. So I have some purple paint, like a light purple, that I wanted to use, because I really wanna keep this pastel-y like, you know, for lack of a better word. So I put some light purple paint here. And what we're gonna do is I wanna keep it like looking like it's still pastel. So I probably should let this dry just a little bit, but let's just see. Ooh, that's pretty. Cause what are we doing? We're just adding dimension. When we go to use our dimensional magic, all this is gonna pop because that's what that does. Not only does it give a gloss and a shine, it gives dimension to your design. So really pretty. And again, we're gonna add something in the center as soon as we finish. Adding some purple centerpieces. One more. Because more is always better in art. I think that's really pretty. I think the light's too bright. That's how it looks. So let me clean off the brush and then we're gonna do the other one. So same thing, I'm just dipping the brush in the paint. And we're just adding some purple stripes. Now again, I could have done the flower white and done the, pa the petals yellow. I'm sorry, done the petals white and then the centerpiece of the flower could have done yellow. You can do it however you wanna do it. But I like how this is turning out. 
And I'm not sure that I'm going to want to go and add any green to it because I don't want green on the pink and all that. Because again, I just want it to be pastel. So pretty, look. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get like some light brown paint and get something that we can put in there to give like, to make it look like there's seeds in there. So this is like a little beige. And I need to go get one more brown paint. Instead of doing a brown, I decided to use a metallic gold. This is Deco Art Metallic. And it is in the color Splendid Gold. I'm going to hold it right there so you can take a screenshot. I got that at Hobby Lobby. And then the other one is Antique White, which does not look white at all, by Craft Smart. I don't love the Craft Smart paints, but it's what I have. So that's what we're going to use. So I'm just going to dot some of the Craft Smart. It's a neutral beige color in the center of the flower, just to make it look brown-like. And then we're gonna add some of that antique gold, just to darken it up. And give the flower a center. I know it's not a perfect little flower, but it's gonna be pretty. So then, off camera, I'm gonna go pull the, um, the petals out just a little bit more, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so while the other one is drying, I'm gonna go across the little bee's body to try to put his butterfly stripes on. And the paint is still really wet, the yellow paint, so you wanna be sure to wipe your brush between adding his stripes or let it dry completely so you don't mess up your design. I'm just being, I'm just rushing it a little bit. So he needs one more stripe. So I'm gonna get a thinner brush to try to do that with, not try. I'm gonna get a thinner brush and we're gonna do it using a thinner base. I don't know, my brushes seem to be the same size on the bottom, but let's use this one. So again, I'm just dipping the end of the brush in the black paint. And I'm just lightly touching to drag the black paint across to make the lines. Then we're gonna do his butt. So he's super cute. Now I'm gonna let him dry. He's gonna get wings, but he needs to dry first. Because if I keep trying to mix these paints up, I think it's going to end up with a muddled mess. And I don't want to do that. So let's put his other stripe up there. And then we're going to do his little butt too. Bee butts. He's cute. And he'll start looking like a bee after he has his wings. So we're going to let all that dry. And then we'll be back. Because I also want to add a little bit more color and dimension to the flower. Oh Lord, and bolts outside. So this is how the flower looks so far. And I think I wanna do like maybe some hot pink in there, but something to give it like a pop of color. And then we'll be good to go. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to do the bumblebees little wings. I already started it a little bit. And all I'm gonna do is like an upside down horseshoe. All I did was just an upside down horseshoe, which is kind of hard to show on camera. But over here, because he's hanging off the edge a little bit, I'm going to do my best to take his wing to look like it's going off the edge of the, of the earring. So same over here, only because I put the little bumblebee so close to the edge, I had to make it look like he's going off the edge of the earring. And again, you might have to cut me some slack. I'm a little bumblebee, it's my first time. Oh, my hand's covering it up. So I'm just doing an upside down. Like an upside down circle. Just giving him a wing. And then what we're gonna do is use the metallic gold paint to just do another line connecting the wing. Cause we want it to look like there's veins, right? We don't wanna 
completely cover his wing up. So I might add more than one bumblebee somewhere over in here, just so we can make him look like he has more detail. But I don't wanna get carried away because I'm not an artist like that. So look, he's really pretty. I'm still working on the flower. So let me go see if I wanna add another little bumblebee over there and we'll be right back. Okay, cool, since bumblebees are anatomically incorrect, right, meaning they don't know that they can fly, so I added a few little extra, well, uh, one extra wing to him because I realized when I look back over at the picture, he does have two wings on each side, but they don't realize that they're actually too heavy to fly. How cool are they, right? So I think that's super sweet. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm still working on the flowers, so I'm getting ready to go. I think I need to add some white to it, so I'm gonna do some white petals that kind of make it fan out a little bit. So I'm gonna go make, I wanna make it look more like a daisy, so let's let those little bees dry over there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this fan brush, I'm gonna wet it, and I wanna make the, um, the flower look more like it has some white petals. So it looks flower-like, cause right now it just looks like a dollop of paint. So let's do some outward petals. And then we're gonna leave this earring alone cause I wanted a simple design and we're gonna keep it simple. So I don't wanna keep messing with it and then it's like team too much. So just gonna add a few more petals in here. Gonna make it look like it's going off the edge. I think that's pretty, I like that. I like how that added a pop to it. So it looks like a really pretty daisy. So same for this one. Just gonna add some more petals. Cause I think it was just looking like a blob of mush. You can't really tell that that was a flower. Of course, I'm sure somebody would have delightfully told me that as well. <laughs> right, cause I'm not Bob Ross. Like look, he's way more patient and way more talented, but in my mind, this is just what I want it to look like. I want it to be like a really pretty flower popping off of a, um, like a flower that comes through, you know, like a fence. When you're riding by and you see like vines coming through an old fence and it's just really pretty. That's what I want it to look like. So now I think I'm gonna leave it alone. I think that is so pretty. And the pop of color it's gonna have excuse me, once it dries, I think it's gonna be incredible. Let me put all this down, I'm holding too much stuff in my hand. Let's put this up and then I'll hold it up where you can see it. And I'm not sure, but I think I might add something to the bumblebee as well, like a little bit of lavender, I'm not sure, but I might wanna add a little flower over there or something so he's not just out there hanging by himself on a free for all. But I think these are really pretty. Oh wait, sorry about that. Let's do this. Right, better. So I think they're really beautiful, so I'm gonna let them dry. They're gonna sit over to the side. The bumblebees look like bumblebees now that they have wings over on this side. Now they have a large, ooh, I touched him. Thank God he was dry. Now they have a larger wing. So look, they look like one whole bumblebee. So I'm gonna let that dry because I feel like if I keep messing with it, it's gonna get messed up. So I'll be right back. Hey, you guys. So I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see what they look like. I think they are super, super cutesy. I think they look better this way on the outside edge. So stand by. I think they are beautiful. And so now what we're gonna do is I have some components that I had previously painted. I'm gonna show you my bag of tricks. Stay tuned. So look how pretty that is. So this is what they look like if we use the butterfly with the flower design. I think that's really pretty. And then this is what it looks like if we just leave them blue. I think the blue is pretty too, but I'm just not sure. They do pop, let's see. 
but I feel like it overpowers the design. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna keep it on this way here and then I'm gonna, when I go to gloss it, that it's gonna add a really nice pop. And then for these, look at that red against that um, cream color and the little bumblebees. I think that really stands out. So of course, I have to figure out how to connect these as well because look, you'll see, let me get my end. You'll see right here, Here's my little stylus. There's no way to really connect them right there because there's a separation right here. So I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna use a bunch of jump rings together, connect it to the back to put them together. So let's get that idea um, designed down. Now what I could do is I could put them on an angle and I could let them hang that way because then I could easily put a hole there and I could run the jump ring through the butterfly that way. So I could do that, but then I have to be concerned how's it gonna connect at the top. So design, design, design. So the same thing with these, I could put them on a tilt and have them that way, but then I feel like you wouldn't really know that they're butterflies. So I gotta figure that out. For now, that's gonna be in part two. I'm gonna go figure that out. But I just wanted to show you, we're starting to put our components together. We've already got the bases painted for our spring fling earrings, and I think they're coming so together. Quite a while back, I had a whole bunch of um, components that I had painted. They were just random, various wood pieces and I had painted them different colors. There's so many different things in here. And so what I plan to do was just use them as um, like random base pieces to jewelry whenever I was making or designing jewelry that I would have extra things to choose from, right? So I got this idea as I was driving to use the butterflies that I have. So I had some open face butterflies these all came in a pack from Michaels and the they were different butterflies. So there were some that were open like that. That one's wet, that's so why I'm holding it like that. And, but anyway, this is just a whole bag of pre-painted. So if you wanna save time in designing jewelry, paint things in multiples, right? So that way when you need something, you can just go grab it and you can always repaint it. Cause this isn't cement, right? It's paint. <laughs> so these were already painted and I think that they're gonna go really part now I could use them on the blue use the little butterfly on the blue side and put him down there to go with the earring that way or I could use him on the multicolored side and he could be really muted like the front of the earring is right now all I have to do is figure out how I'm gonna connect them I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see it better so I had already painted these red and what I did this particular open woven butterfly or open face butterfly I don't know why I said woven, but you know what I mean. He's like a lattice butterfly. So I already had them painted. I just basically touched the paint up, but now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna connect them. So I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see them. I think they're really pretty. I'm gonna turn one butterfly on blue and one on the muted tone so we can see which we prefer. I'd have to repaint the back of him because they've been in that bag for a minute. So. I love that I already had those components painted because now I can decide how do I wanna put these together. And this red really makes the butterfly pop. I mean, the bumblebees pop. 